afternoon friends it is another beautiful fall day and I have just left church I guess not just but church was just ended a short time ago and our sermon today was packed full of challenges and information and it was a wonderful sermon so thank you Pastor Danny at Cornerstone Community Church in Wadsworth, Illinois for such a phenomenal sermon and if you are interested in it, it was on 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 3 through 7 and if you are interested in the challenges and information that he put forth you can view that sermon um, on YouTube. Church. So, good morning. It's Real Life with Andrea. I guess it's afternoon, and I am here today to talk to you about I'm not sure what because my mind is full of so much after this sermon. So, originally, I was thinking this morning on my way to church about the topic of forgiveness versus reconciliation, and I think that's a really good topic. But our sermon just left my mind reeling with things regarding, um, gosh, as a nation, we are in trouble. We are in trouble because we, as Christians, we don't know persecution. And we think that if someone teases us because of our faith or we lose our job because of our faith, that that's persecution. But ladies and gentlemen, if things don't change in the United States of America, persecution is coming, persecution that we are not we are not prepared for um, as we raise children who and not necessarily me in particular or you in particular but as the families of this generation raise children who are so spoiled and who think that when they don't get what they want or they don't have as much as a friend that it's not fair and they're being peer persecuted or their life is over or whatever it is that they're going through as we raise them to be that way allow them to be that way that we don't teach them what it means to do without or to be persecuted or how to stand for their faith um, we they, they are beginning these ideologies these kids who are in school are beginning and, and have for generations because my oldest who's in her 30s this began way back then and I'm sure it was before that that everything needs to be equal I want everything to be equal I want everybody to have the same they have no idea what that means what that means that if we go to a country where everybody is equal it means nobody has anything it doesn't mean we all have everything it means nobody has anything so the government takes from everybody and portions out and they just don't realize what that means. They just think that we're all gonna be equal and that's gonna be great, but it's not. And for those of you who come from countries where socialism and communism has been a thing and you've left those countries and you came to America to experience freedom, why? The free freedom, one, freedom to have things that you work for, that you earn, that you can you can do all things you can be what you want to be you can make as much money as you want to make if you're willing to put in the work now i know that there are some people that work really hard and they whatever they don't they aren't able to do it i mean i am one of those people i live below the poverty line i have worked really hard to build up a business that has not done anything more for me than make me be able to survive. I'm not rich. I don't have everything that I want. I don't have a big house, but I would rather be struggling and have the ability, the freedom to have my own business, to work or not work, to drive a car or not drive a car, to have a big house or a small house. Like all of these things are choices that I get to make. And our kids just don't realize that yes, everything would be equal, but no, you would no longer have choices. So you want those Nike kicks? Ain't gonna happen 
because no one's getting Nike kicks anymore. You want those designer jeans? Sorry, you're not gonna have the money for those. You do now, you can go to work and you can earn a paycheck and you can get the jeans that you want to get. Socialism, communism, uh-uh, you're not gonna be able to do that. But a picture has been painted for our children that socialism is going to be the, the best thing for our country and it's not. And so recently I was listening to Candace Owens and she made a comment that has stuck with me and that is that in order for socialism to really be able to take hold for our country to be able to move in that direction, the first thing that they have to do is destroy the family. How do you think we're doing on that? Our kids don't wanna be a part of our family. They hurry up, grow up, and get out as fast as they can. And why is that? I look around and I see parents who are not raising their children. They're giving them the freedom of choice at three and four. Well, guess what? The formative ages for our children, the most important age to teach our child right from wrong, obedience, kindness, compassion, all of those things is zero to seven. And we are letting four-year-olds rule our houses. We are letting four-year-olds determine what they're going to eat and what they're going to wear, or three-year-olds, or five-year-olds, or, or seven-year-olds. We are, we are giving them the responsibilities that, that older children or adults should have, and we haven't taught and trained them. Well, how do I make this decision? What is best for me? Um, we're allowing them to stay up late. We aren't require, like we don't require anything of them. And that is the collective we, not individual we's. Um, but then we wonder what has happened because I let my child have all this freedom, but they didn't know what to do it. They weren't responsible, responsible for it. It's like letting a puppy run amok in your house. You let them pee all over, you let them poop all over, and you think one day they're gonna be adults and not do that. That doesn't happen. Those things don't happen without training. If we do not train our children in the way that they should go, they don't know what way to go. That's our job. It's the job that God has given us. God has given us, the parents, the responsibility of showing our children, not just those things, but who he is. And as parents, more often than not, our children are being failed at pointing them to Jesus. God gave our children parents parents to teach and to train them in the way that they should go, not only in the tangible rights and wrongs of society, but of how to love God. We are supposed to be setting the example of how to treat people, and that starts with how we treat them. I see over and over and over, and I am guilty sometimes of expecting our children to be better than the example we're showing them, to do better. I find myself yelling at my children for the very thing that I am doing right now. You're treating your friends badly, blah, 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 blah. Well, what example am I just setting right now then? When I don't like the way that you are acting, I am going to yell at you, whatever it is. We are not always going to get it right, but we have to we have to take seriously our job as parents while those children are in our home and it starts from zero to seven. And when we tell our children to do something, we must expect them to do it. Guess what? When God tells us to do something, he expects us to do it. When we don't do it, he gives us grace and he gives us mercy. And that's our job as parents. When our children break the rules or when our children don't do what's right. We tell them, we talk to them, we show them, but we also give them grace and mercy. Because why? Because we are supposed to be pointing them to Jesus so that they can know forgiveness. They can know grace. They can know mercy so that when they get to adults, they don't reject the idea that they can be forgiven. I'm, I'm too much of a mess. I've done too many wrong things. I can't be forgiven. No, I know that I can. How do I know that God can forgive me? Because my parents did. Because my parents were good to me. Because my parents, though they may have had to show tough love, sometimes they always loved me. They always gave me grace. They always gave me mercy. They always showed me love. They always helped me. They were always there to support me. They never threw me out. They never abandoned me. 
They always did what was right, even when it felt painful. I can look back and see how that helped me. Parents, if you are parenting children and you think it's easy, I would take a harder look at parenting, at your parenting style, because parenting, apart from a fair few kids, is hard work. Our job is to teach and train and to grow our children into Christ-following, God-fearing, adult, successful adults. And I'm not talking about financial success. I'm not talking about educational success. I'm talking about kids who are contributing members of society that love the Lord, that are going to show kindness and compassion to others, that are going to bring grace and mercy into the world and into their relationships, that are going to build the family unit rather than destroy it, that are going to speak truth and seek truth their whole lives. And that's a hard job. That's a big responsibility. And I am going to challenge those of you out there who are parents or thinking about being parents or hoping to be parents or grandparents to think on that and to look at your own life and to see, is that how you approach parenting? Not is your parenting perfect, but is that the mindset that you have? Is that how you are approaching parenting? I am raising these children for God. I am raising these children. They have been given to me to raise for God, to love him, to know him, to seek him, and to bring others to him. Well, that's a lot of information and it was nowhere near where I thought I was going to go. But thank you for listening. I do hope that that challenge will be something that you will take seriously and taking a good hard look at your parenting. Think about the future of this country and how if the family falls apart, there is nothing. There, that, that family unit is what binds us all together. And when the family unit is destroyed, there's nothing, there's no hope left for our country. Um, I, um, that's a scary thought, isn't it? It's a scary thought. Anyhow, thank you for joining me. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have, are liking the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do not post daily. Sometimes I post multiple times a week, sometimes I don't. So that notification bell then becomes important to let you know when I have posted videos if you're wanting to see more. So um, enjoy the rest of your day and think about that parenting style thing and how also part of that also is raising up children who will be able to stand up against persecution because again as I said at the beginning of the video it's coming maybe not in my lifetime maybe not in my children's lifetime but maybe in their lifetime so are we setting the example of how they should parent their children to raise their children to be able to stand up for their faith against persecution thanks again for watching and